Every video game franchise has a definitive game, the most highly regarded specific game in a specific series. And that is especially true in the realm of competitive gaming. There's always that one game that everyone looks back on, one game that has such a dedicated fan base, and that one game that's widely considered the best in the series by many. When it comes to competitive games nowadays, developers always try their best to balance everything within it. Try and balance every gun, every character, every ability, but on some rare occasions you find some games that are just outright broken. Best example I can think of is Super Smash Bros. Melee. I don't think this game needs any introduction. I'm sure you've heard a thing or two about the sweaty, hardcore wombo combo community that revolves around the game that is Melee. It has a huge following and is still highly praised even after being out for almost two decades. The game was rushed heavily during development, causing many imbalances and game glitches, but the unique thing about Melee is it actually works in its favor. Wave dashing, DI, L canceling, all these seem like broken mechanics, but in reality, they enhance the experience in a competitive point of view. So when a game ends up like this, I like to consider it a melee. A melee, a game that is broken mechanically but works in its favor in a competitive point of view. So going back to Super Smash Bros. Melee, this game has tons of different techniques and methods that make the game feel like it's broken, and it is, but surprisingly these mechanics enhance the gameplay. They make the experience more memorable and interesting, and without these mechanics, I believe Melee wouldn't be the game we know today. It wouldn't have the fan base, the popularity, and overall, it wouldn't be the same. But now let's shift gears and look at a game like Mario Kart. <laughs> See what I did there? Everyone knows Mario Kart, right? It's crazy fun action for the whole family. Racing around, throwing items, drifting around corners. That's amazing. It's a great game to play with friends and family, and it's the pure definition of casual. But what if I told you that there's a game in this franchise specifically that's widely considered the melee of Mario Karts? Mario Kart is one of my favorite series ever. It's a game that I can pick up and mindlessly play for hours. The beauty of Mario Kart to me is its mass appeal to everyone. The items put everyone on an even playing field, making so that even the weakest link in a group can win a race, while also catering to more advanced players, giving them the ability to drift around tight corners and use advanced shortcuts. It's such a perfect blend of both skill and luck, and makes for a very enjoyable series to play. From Super Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo to Mario Kart 8 on the Switch, there's no bad Mario Kart game. Say what you want about Mario Kart 64 and Mario Kart Super Circuit, every game I've played, I've enjoyed, and I could never get enough of it. But out of all the games in the series, I played this bad boy the most, Mario Kart Wii. This was probably my most played game as a kid. I remember playing hours, like honestly, countless hours of this game, and I loved every second of it. Every day, me and a close friend of mine would always play online with each other. I remember both of us getting max online ranking, and eventually we got so bored we managed to hack the game to get custom tracks and infinite items, but that's a... Um, that's a whole nother can of worms, but yeah, this game is still solid, and after coming back to it years and years later, it's still my favorite Mario Kart game of all time. I don't know, man, you just can't beat the game's track list, all the unique characters, and I can't really explain it, but Mario Kart Wii controls so smoothly in my opinion. I will agree that Mario Kart 8 overall is the best made game in the entire franchise, but I just can't help but say this one is still my favorite. Even after all these years later, MK Wii is beloved by so many people. But why? From an outsider's perspective, it's just another old, regular Mario Kart game. However, if you look deeper, you'll start to notice that Mario Kart Wii is actually kinda broken. Mario Kart Wii is unlike any other Mario Kart. Similar to Melee, it's unbalanced and mechanically broken in certain areas. But again, just like Melee, these advanced techniques and mechanics enhance the gameplay and makes this game the most unique experience in the whole Mario Kart franchise. Most people look at Mario Kart as a casual, fun party game, and for good reason. The items alone make the whole experience less competitive. 
However, with MK Wii having more advanced tech and track manipulation, it almost seems to overpower the RNG elements, making this game the most competitive Mario Kart. So now you're probably asking yourself, well, how broken is Mario Kart Wii? And to answer that, we'll need to start with the basics. Mario Kart Wii brought many new things to the Mario Kart formula, but none can compare to the motorized vehicle that is the bike. It was pretty much inevitable at this point. Not only were they a cool new addition to the series, but they also had some interesting properties about them, the biggest one being the way they would handle on the track. In Mario Kart games beforehand, you would use what's called an outward drift, meaning whenever you would utilize a drift, your cart would naturally shift outwards, making more of a smooth arc around turns and corners of a track. But bikes are a different story. Bikes in general are more mobile, and so in MK Wii, some bikes feature an inward drift, shifting the player more inwards for sharper turns. This meant that bikes could be used for more complex movement. They also had the mechanic of wheeling. Whenever you were on a straightaway, you could use the wheelie to build up speed faster than you would in a cart. So combining both inward drifting and wheeling on bikes, for the most part, made carts in this game obsolete. I mean, if you ever joined an online race in this game, it was no longer Mario Kart, but Mario Motorbikes. Every track felt like it catered to bikes more in every way. You could maneuver around some tracks with insane amount of speed. It also helped that if you held your drift long enough, you could get a mini speed boost. So with inward drifting, mini speed boost, and having the ability to wheelie on straightaways for speed, it's safe to say that bikes were by far the most used vehicle in this game. But it wasn't all about what cart or bike you chose, but it also mattered what character you picked as well. Character stats aren't anything new to Mario Kart. You pick a character and they usually play a little different. But it seems like in MK Wii, they kind of went a little wild with it. In this game, there are three different weight classes, each one having their own exclusive vehicles to choose from. You have the lightweights that have fast acceleration, medium weights which are balanced, and heavyweights that have a higher top speed. Each character also has their own individual hidden stats. So picking certain characters with certain cards can produce some crazy stats, like for example, Toadette in the Mega Cruiser almost has no effect when driving off-road. But if we're going to talk about character combinations, there's one in particular that was the king of all combinations. It was top tier, it was the main meta, and if you have any knowledge of MK Wii, you most likely know of the double F duo. Funky Kong Flame Runner. Funky Kong was a heavyweight character, and as mentioned before, all heavyweights have a higher top speed. But Funky Kong's hidden stats gave him plus two extra speed, which means his top speed was the best in the game. The Flame Runner bike was also one of the best bikes in the game. It had inward drifting, great speed, and its mini turbo stat was pretty good too. It's kind of funny to say this in the context of Mario Kart, but this was the main meta. The other main combination that dominated was Daisy in the Mach bike. Daisy was a more balanced character overall, and same with Funky, her stats boosted her top speed. The Mach bike has really good drifting and mini turbo stats as well, so combine a well-balanced character plus some good mini turbo stats, and you got yourself a pretty deadly combination. Although these character stats do help, it's not the most important thing when playing at a high level. MK Wii is full of advanced tech that make the game more complex than most people think, and some of these mechanics are so minuscule, but are some of the most important. So, let's break down a couple of them. The most important mechanic in all of Mario Kart is the drift. Whenever you hold a drift for a certain amount of time, it charges what's called a mini turbo, and once released will give you a little boost forward. The amount of time it takes to charge a turbo depends on how sharp your drift is. This is what helps build or maintain your speed in every race. We've already talked about the outward and inward drifts, but specifically in MK Wii, there are multiple ways of utilizing drifts. I would say there are three main important types of drifts in this game. The delay drift, the chain drift, and the slip drift. Let's start with the most important one, the delay drift. Now, if you ever played Mario Kart Wii back in 2008, you most likely performed an insta drift, also known as a 2008 drift. An insta-drift is when you turn and press the drift button simultaneously. Now, this isn't a bad method at all. In fact, it's still used quite often. But in today's standards of MK Wii, it's a little outdated in comparison to the delay drift. A delay drift is when you delay your movement when inputting a drift. So instead of moving and drifting at the same time, you press the drift button and delay your movement slightly. 
compared to the Insta Drift, why is this one considered the better technique? Well, from what I understand, the delay drift sets you up for better angles and alignments before and after drifting, helping you set up for more sharper turns and as a result making your mini turbo charge faster. This is probably the most common and most important technique in the game. It's simple to learn, easy to do, and it's the most effective. Next up is the Chain Drift. A Chain Drift is when you perform multiple mini turbos consecutively. Pretty self-explanatory. But there are also wheelie chain drifts that make so that you can chain drift a lot faster. In order to do one of these, you have to charge a mini turbo, and as you release it, wheelie and instantly perform another drift. This makes the hopping animation of the start of a drift lower to the ground, which essentially charges your next drift faster. If I'm being honest, these are super hard to perform, and if you want to learn more about them, there's some tutorials out there explaining them more in detail, but I'm just not skilled enough to do them. And the last one to mention is the slip drift. When performing a normal drift, whenever you press the drift button, your character will do a little hop animation, and once that's done is when you actually start drifting. Slip drifting takes the whole hop animation out of the equation. A slip drift is when you perform the inputs of a drift while airborne, making so when you land, you instantly start drifting. Now, this method is situational and most of the time is used with uneven track terrain. You can use it after tricks, hills, bumps, pretty much anything that makes you airborne. I would argue that this method is one of the most important simply because in some tracks, you're constantly tricking and in the air, and there's many ways to use this to your advantage. As you can see, there's many different types of drifts in this game, and I haven't even mentioned all of them. There's spin drifts, soft drifts, ski drifts. It's pretty insane, honestly, but I'm not nearly skilled enough or smart enough to explain those. But I hope after explaining a couple of methods, you get a better understanding of how drifting generally works in this game. But of course, we're not done yet. Drifting is important, but tricking is a whole new playing field. The trick was first introduced in Mario Kart Wii. When driving off a ramp or a jump, you can pull off a stunt to gain a speed boost after you land. This one mechanic became a main staple to the franchise going forward, and without it, these games would almost feel empty. It keeps the races exciting, they're fun to pull off, and I can't see another Mario Kart game without them. But with every game being the first to implement a new mechanic, there's gonna be some side effects. The most notable one in MK Wii being the low trick. A low trick is exactly what the name implies, a low trick. Low tricking eliminates the amount of time in the air. Standard tricking for the most part has more of an arc motion, whereas low tricking keeps you more level to the ground but still gives you that speed boost you would normally get from a standard trick. One thing to note about low tricking is it is situational and you can only pull them off on certain ramps. Now there's many different ways of performing low tricks, but it all depends on what kind of ramp you're tricking off of. It can depend on the type of ramp, the angle of the ramp, or simply how low the ramp is to the ground. However, there is one technique for performing most low tricks. As mentioned earlier, whenever you try and perform a drift, your character does a short hop animation. The reason I say this is because some ramps have weird properties when short hopping into them. Essentially what happens when hopping into a ramp is you're clipping the back end of your vehicle causing you to shoot downwards for some strange reason. Best example I can think of is these yellow ramps in GBA Bowser's Castle 3. When approaching these specific ramps, you want to short hop up to them and trick as you're ascending. It may seem pretty advanced at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. Performing low tricks saves a ton of time and boosts you forward at crazy speeds. It's one of those techs that you get better at the more you play the game. It not only looks cool to do, but it's super satisfying to pull off. So now that we've talked about the main mechanics of the game, it's time to focus on one, if not the most important thing in a racing game. The tracks. Mario Kart Wii is home to 32 great tracks. Mario Kart Wii is home to 31 great tracks. This game has a solid track list and has some of the most iconic tracks in all of Mario Kart. Mushroom Gorge, Coconut Mall, DK Summit, they're all great. But the thing that sets these specific tracks apart from all the rest is their exploits. 
Almost every track has a certain exploit or advanced shortcut. This not only adds a more skillful curve to the game, but it also makes these tracks way more memorable. Some of these exploits take a decent amount of precision and skill. They aren't just some cut through grass type shortcuts. These are advanced techniques that are fairly hard to pull off. But because they are so hard to pull off, it makes them so rewarding to do. When you combine all the advanced tech together, the drifting, the tricking, and use all these tools out on the racetrack, it creates an experience that's so different, and it's my favorite thing about Mario Kart Wii. Shortcuts in this game can be categorized into three different types. Number one, the standard shortcuts, the shortcuts the game intended for you to use. Number two, the exploit cuts, which are more advanced and usually aren't the intended shortcuts that the developers created. And finally, number three, the ultra shortcuts, which are the most advanced and technical cuts to do in this game. The exploit cuts are my favorite out of the three just because compared to ultra shortcuts, they're more practical to use in a normal race. You have the Toad Factory Lake Cut, the Delfino Dock Jump, the DK Summit Double, but by far my favorite shortcut out of all of them is the Gap Jump and Mushroom Gorge. By using a mushroom and short hopping at just the right time, you can manage to skip the last gap in Mushroom Gorge. You have just the right amount of both speed and height to pull it off, and it's so fun to do. It creates some exciting finishes when racing on the track, and I love it. You see, these kinds of shortcuts have never been seen before in a Mario Kart game, and because this game is so broken, the community has managed to find an exploit cut in almost all 32 tracks. It adds to the experience, it makes it more competitive, it sets these specific tracks apart from any other track in Mario Kart. I think this game has probably the best tracks in this series right next to DS. Personally, I think this list isn't special just because of the tracks themselves, but it's because of what you can do in these tracks that make them special. When you take all that we've talked about today, the tech, the tracks, everything, it shows just how different this particular Mario Kart really is. As you've seen, this Mario Kart is the most advanced game in the series, and I think the craziest thing about this game is the community is still going strong today. <sighs> yeah. A Mario Kart game that came out in 2008 has a community that is still going strong today. Over the course of this game's lifespan, hackers and modders have helped shape the community we know today. Custom Track Grand Prix is one of the biggest mods I've ever seen for a game, and it just so happens to be the biggest mod for Mario Kart Wii. It adds over 200 custom tracks to race on, and the best thing about it is it supports online play. So even after Nintendo's Wi-Fi servers for the Wii shut down, the community was so dedicated they made their own servers to play on. This hack is insane, and if you want to learn more about it, head over to chadsoft.co for more details. MK Wii is unlike any other Mario Kart. It has a competitive scene, it has broken mechanics, broken characters, and for a Mario Kart game especially, you don't see a community form around one specific game in the series. Once a new one comes out, everyone seems to flock to that one, but Mario Kart Wii has managed to stay afloat for many years with the help of modders and the community. And although it may be broken mechanically, it works in its favor, and is why I and many others like to consider it the melee of Mario Kart's.